If we talk about something and argue that it exists, then modern political economy dictates that we have to be able to measure it in some meaningful way. This notion echoes the British scientist Lord Kelvin, who argued that when you can measure what you are speaking about and express it in numbers, you know something about it. But when you cannot measure it, when you cannot express it in numbers, your knowledge is of a meagre and unsatisfactory kind. This said, as argued by Petra Vujakovic, quantifying globalisation is a tricky task, taking into account its complexity and multidimensionality. In addition, when measuring globalisation, there are several paradoxes which we need to be aware of. Small countries will always be the most globalised. They have to be in order to thrive and survive. They are also more likely to have higher levels of external trade, partly because large countries, such as the US, have large internal markets. Many different measures of globalisation have been proposed over time, but there is really only one that has gained anything like general acceptance. And that is the Index of Globalisation, created by the Swiss, Swiss think tank COF. The other measures and indexes which have been proposed tend to have the same restriction, that they are focused purely on economics. And as argued throughout this course, whilst economics is the key component of globalisation, it is not the only show in town. Where these other indexes do consider other aspects of globalisation, they are produced only on a sporadic basis, whereas the COF index is produced on an annual basis, although usually using data which is two to three years out of date. The COF index measures the three main dimensions of globalisation, economic, social and political. But before looking in detail at what they measure within these three dimensions, it is necessary to look at their definition of globalisation, which is as follows. The process of creating networks of connections among actors at multi-continental distances, mediated through a variety of flows, including people, information and ideas, capital and goods. Globalisation is conceptualised as a process that erodes national boundaries, integrates national economies, cultures, technologies and governance, and produces complex relations of mutual interdependence. Following on from this, the way COF measures the dimensions of globalisation is identified below. Economic globalisation is measured by the actual flows of trade, foreign direct investment and portfolio investment, as well as the restrictions applying to these flows. Social globalisation is expressed as the spread of ideas, information, images and people. It is estimated by personal contact, international telephone traffic, transfers, tourism, foreign population and international letters, information flows, internet users, television ownership, trade in newspapers, and cultural proximity, number of McDonald's restaurants, number of IKEA shops, and trade in books. Political globalisation is characterised by the degree of political cooperation. It is measured by the number of embassies, membership of international organisations, participation in UN Security Council missions and numbers of international treaties signed. According to the 2015 index, which measures globalisation from 2012, the 10 most globalised countries in the world were all located in Europe, with the exception of the city-state of Singapore, which critics of the index have suggested indicates regionalisation rather than globalisation. The top 10 could be seen on the screen now. Ireland, Netherlands, Belgium, Austria, Singapore, Sweden, Denmark, Portugal, Switzerland and Finland. At the other end of the spectrum, the 10 least globalised countries were a mixture of failed states, very poor countries in sub-Saharan Africa or Asia or Pacific Island groups. The bottom 10 is as follows. Sudan, Comoros, Afghanistan, Bhutan, Equatorial Guinea, Eritrea, the People's Democratic Republic of Laos, Kiribati, Somalia and the Solomon Islands. One particularly interesting aspect revealed by the COF index is that, relatively speaking, 
The BRIC group of countries, the coming powers of Brazil, Russia, India and China, are underglobalized, especially when compared to OECD countries. Respectively, they rank 77th, 53rd, 109th and 75th. Thus, it would seem that there is a significant opportunity for these countries to maintain their economic growth by adopting a more global strategy.